wonderful people excited to be here i hope you guys are doing fabulous i'm doing great so the whistle has been blown by the dv lottery um the department of state u.s department of state and the game has begun so yes it's the visa lottery fever people you know like some hours ago yeah i would say um yeah just some a few hours ago so don't wear yourself out just pace yourself out make sure you're submitting a very solid application so guys welcome to this live video if you're watching me on facebook you're very welcome don't forget to like, follow our page. And if you're watching on YouTube, please, of course, subscribe to my channel, like and comment. And we're going to have a lot of fun today discussing so many things. So very welcome to this video. So it's, of course, a visa lottery fever. So I'm still, I've received tons, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of inquiries about it. People from all around the world, from Afghanistan, Pakistan, Ghana, my home country, even from Nigeria, that country that doesn't qualify prima facie. I mean, different people have been uh, messaging and blowing up our emails and uh, messengers with inquiries about visa lottery. So guys, this is as good as it can get. This is the, the, the free help I can give after I leave here. It's all business, right? You have to book a consultation to speak with me and then for me to assist you. So please take as much as you can from this video. Hopefully it will help you and guide you. So yeah, we're going to be chatting about it. Some very interesting things, some frequently asked questions about it. Guys, drop me your comment. Let me know if you are feeling the visa lottery fever, like how you are doing as well, if you're planning on applying. Um, and yes, at the end of the video, I'll be giving you guys some tips you know, some tips. So yes, please stay tuned. Let me share my screen and let's just jump to it. Please drop me your comments. And yes, if you don't feel like talking, <laughs> just drop me some emoji of how you're feeling, what you're eating, just any type of emoji to communicate to me your feeling. Okay, guys. So, um, huh. it looks like I scroll down too fast. We're going to be, um, you know, talking about some frequently asked questions. Let me scroll back up i must have yeah i think yes yesterday we reviewed you know some um eligibility criteria so today we're still going to talk about the frequently we're going to talk about the frequently asked questions you know the questions that are on people's minds guys i'll be reading your emojis i'll be interpreting your emojis very soon so drop them for me drop me your comments you know you know just anything just drop what you feel like dropping and let's get interact interactive okay so the first thing is that with visa, well, I think I need to still give an overview, even though we've um, we talked about this yesterday. So the visa lottery essentially is a program that has been established by the U.S. Department of State. OK. And, um, you know, you know, America, the whole point is that Americans feel like immigrants have helped to build their country. And, you know, they usually say, oh, America is a melting pot. And America is, is, is a diverse pool of immigrants and it, it makes it really rich. It makes a country really rich because you'll find immigrants thriving in all places in the U.S. You know, you sit in an Uber, you find immigrants, you go to the grocery store, you find an immigrant, you go to the hospital, you find surgeons, medical doctors, you know, you go to the you, immigrants are just everywhere in schools, professors, their teachers, you know, they are doing amazing so the whole point of the visa lottery was to give um countries which had a very low level of immigration to the u.s a chance for their people to also come into the united states okay so for example ghana we have you know ghana has issued less than fifty thousand immigrants visas within the last five years to the u.s so essentially it's defined as having a low level of immigration that means that not too many people are given visas to come to ghana so, uh, i'm sorry to the u.s from ghana so they want to encourage ghanaians to come to the u.s and of course they want the rich you know the rich selection um guys remember that president ex-president trump actually mentioned you know he did want to dismantle the visa lottery and actually talked about the fact that you know visa lottery he, he wasn't in favor of it because um, they were given uh, green cards to people from shithole countries. So that's where it came from. Yes, the very famous visa lottery. So um, that's, but the point is that visa lottery, there's actually a minimum level of education and work experience that you should have because, of course, they also want, you know, a certain um, category of people. And, um, 
the logic behind this is that, well, the U.S. Department of State's um, analysis of the issue is that um, when people come, they should be able to support themselves. Guys, by the time you're giving that secret package, you know, and then you come, you, well, you, you, you're you giving something and then you come, you're given a six month visa when you win the visa lodge and then you come to the airport and then you enter the US and they tell you, welcome to America, you are on your own, okay? You are absolutely on your own and you should be able to fend for yourself. For at that point, you have to make your calls. Who's coming to pick you up from the airport? Where are you going to live? Who's going to feed you and all of that? So when you come to the U.S. with, a, you know, some level of work experience or some education, it helps you because you will be able to, you know, adapt much more quickly. And that's the basis. They don't want people who are going to be relying on the state and, you know, can't find jobs and can't find anything to do. Okay. So guys, um, the foreign affairs manual is actually the regulations that um, regulates the visa lottery. And according to the foreign affairs manual, um, 9 FAM, Five, section 502.62, the numerical limit every year, they give up to 55,000 visas worldwide, okay, in all the six regions. So that visa lottery has divided the world into six regions. Yesterday, we discussed what those regions are. But when you look at the USCIS, it says that it's up to 50,000 visas that are given per year. Okay, so well, whatever it is, it's not more than 55,000. So that's where the discrepancy comes from. Um, Okay, so that's um, a little bit of background. I think I should just mention the areas again, the six areas. Okay, so we have the six regions of visa lottery. We have um, Asia, we have Europe, we have North America, we have Oceania, we have South America, and of course we have Africa. Okay, so these are the competing countries. Well, they're not really competing. It's really because every country has 7% of the visas that has to come. So actually the competition is within the country. So in Ghana, um, all the people that apply are competing for about 3,850 visas to be issued to them. So the competition is within the country. So the competition is really tight and tough and hopefully, you know, the best people will win the game. So yes, let's jump into it. I'm just so excited. I don't know why I just, yes, I just love it that people are given the opportunity to come and pursue the American dream. Of course, some people are fine in Ghana, but not everybody feels like they want to be in Ghana. Other people want to travel and also chase the American dream. So this opportunity is just marvelous for people that are able to, you know, take advantage of it. So let's start. Okay, what does the, the term native and chargeability what does it mean so normally remember that there are some countries that um you have to be a native of some countries like ghana um, um like um kenya like zimbabwe if you're a native it simply means that you were born in that particular country it's not the country of which you're you're in you're um you have nationality you simply have to be a native okay yeah because they want to be able they want to be sure that you are not ineligible. So if you are applying from Nigeria, you are ineligible because Nigeria is not part of the countries that qualify for the visa lottery. Um, unless you fall within a couple of exceptions, we discussed that again yesterday. Okay, so uh, let me see. Yeah, we have a few comments here. Let me just read them. Hopefully, I won't. I, we have so much to cover, so hopefully, we'll just keep it quick. Chris Banks is giving us, you know, the wave. Hello, Chris Banks. Thank you for joining us. Um, Frederick says, "Can undocumented immigrants apply for the lottery?" Unfortunately, no. If you're here in the U.S. and you're undocumented, you will not be able to adjust. Well, you can. If you let me let me start this. If you're in the U.S. anywhere in the U.S., you can apply for the visa lottery. However, with undocumented, you have a problem adjusting because you should be in lawful non immigrant status at the time of adjustment so this will disqualify anybody who is undocumented you'll hit a block you'll go as far as being selected i let me say this i've consulted with so many clients who actually won the visa lottery but unfortunately for them they 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 they, they, they are already even disqualified because they were in um, they were out of status. They were not in lawful non-immigrant status. They were out of status and they applied. So it's useless. They won for nothing. Won't help you. So that's that. And then Thompson Bola is giving a kiss, a kiss right back to you, Thompson. Okay, so let's go back to the discussion. Guys, drop your comments and your, you know, how you're feeling. Just, yeah, I just want to know. I want to hear from you guys. Okay, right here. Let me scroll. Mm, I think I went to the wrong. Okay, so um yeah we're just going to be 
making sure that we're covering a lot of areas and going as fast as possible. We have already done 10 minutes. Okay, so the next thing is, can I still apply if I was not born in a qualifying country? So yesterday I talked about the exceptions. The first thing is that you can, you know, piggyback on your spouse. So if you were born in a country that's not, um, that is not a qualifying country, you can go with your spouse's country and claim that country of um, birth if your spouse's country of birth is one of the eligible countries, okay? Um, and then the second thing is, um, of course, the exceptions. I mean, there are rules to that. You should make sure that you are entering the U.S. with your spouse al along with a few other conditions. Then the second thing is that you can also be charged to the country of um, birth of either of your parents. And here are the conditions. Neither of your parents um, was born in or resident of your country of birth at the time of your birth. Again, let me use Nigeria because Nigeria is a, the only country in Africa that is not part of the visa lottery. The country is not part. The people of that country, natives of that country are not eligible to be part of the visa lottery because they have so many people already immigrating from Nigeria to the US. So they have been kicked out of the game. So we're going to be using Nigeria. So if you are from Nigeria, that means you were born in Nigeria um you can you may still apply under these conditions the first one is that your parents um neither of them were, were born in nigeria for example and neither of them were resident in nigeria at the time of your birth so for example your parents you know let's say they, they were born in ghana but you were born in nigeria at the time well they were living in ghana at the time you were going to be born your mom was heavily pregnant your dad maybe had a meeting in nigeria and he flew with her and when he went with her, you know, you you were you were given birth to. And then within three months, they were back in Ghana. In that instant, you can charge, you can, you, you can be, you can be charged to the country of birth of your parents, which was which is Ghana. Okay, for instance, because even though you were born in Nigeria and that should be your native country, um, because your parents were not considered as residents of Nigeria, you can, you know, use their country of um, Beth. Okay, so that's that for that. And then let me scroll down. We're doing a marathon, a visa lottery marathon. Of course, my T is here. Right here. Okay, so let's go on. How many natives of set how many natives of, of certain countries don't qualify? Um, yes, we discussed this. Um, if you are from a high, high admission country, then you will not qualify. How many DV 2023 visas will go to natives of each country? So not more than 7%. So each, each, um, um, you, each country cannot have more than 7% of the allocated visas, the 50,000. So there's that. And then um, what are the requirements for education or work experience? Okay, so let me let me backtrack on the number four. So, um, as I was telling you guys, if you calculate seven percent of fifty thousand, that's roughly about what three thousand eight hundred and fifty. So three thousand eight hundred and fifty for Ghana, for Zimbabwe, for Kenya, for South Africa, and all those other countries. Ghana, um, the U.S. Embassy will not issue more than three thousand eight hundred and fifty immigrant visas of the DV lottery to Ghanaians. So, guys, you that's why I say you guys have a chance because no matter how many people are applying, you may be part of the people who are actually selected and then, you know, actually get the green card. So that makes the numbers more real um, if you if you think about it that way, okay? So let me scroll down. The issue about um, work experience and education is something that people have been asking about. So let's talk, let's talk about it right here. Uh, what are the requirements? Yesterday we also touched on this. So, okay. So, what occup? Okay, no. What are the requirements for education? So, U.S. immigration law and regulations require that every DV entrant must have at least a high school education or its equivalent, or have. So, these are alternatives. So, you either have a high school education or its equivalent, or you have two years of work experience. Um within the past five years in an occupation that requires at least two years of training. Okay, so guys over here, how they calculate it is that your, your type of occupation, if you don't have the high school education, you should have um, 
some type of occupation. And the occupation has to be an occupation with an SVP range of 7.0%, I'm sorry, 7.0 or higher. Okay, that numerical range. Let's, let's look some more at this. I'm going to have to remove this and then I'm going to discuss, um, oh my gosh, let me take this off. And then I'm going to tell you about how they calculate the SVP range. It's really interesting. So please just stick with me and we will talk about it. Yesterday, I think, yes, I, I touched down on it. Medical doctors, SVP range is 8.0. Lawyers, 8.0 headdresses was 6.0 so does not qualify um according to that calculation um i think carpenter was 4.0 to 6.0 okay so let right here yes i was actually looking at the carpenter that's one of my my searches so what is svp svp is specific vocational preparation okay and um it's actually the u.s department of labor that well yeah it's found in the dictionary of occupational titles it's a u.s department of labor document and um basically um yes so it's the amount of lapsed time required by a typical worker to learn the number one techniques number two acquire the information and number three develop the facility needed for average performance in a specific job worker situation okay so um that's what the svp is they want to make sure that the type of occupation that you have is something that can find you a job when you come to the us and you will not struggle in simple terms that's it um let me yeah let me just still let me see if i can type this out yes let's look at carpenter and as i told you guys 7.0 a range of 7.0 or higher so with the carpentry guys americans are awesome look at how they have a summary reports for every type of occupation um, you know, construction, erection, installation, repairs, whatever, whatever. And then over here, um, you should have some technological skills, some tasks, knowledge. That's how they calculate all these things. And then, yeah, you have some skills as well. Then you have abilities, interesting visualization for carpenters. You should have the ability to imagine how something will look after it's moved around or when its parts are moved or rearranged. Of course, guys, I agree with them because you can't be a carpenter and then you put one leg of the table up and then three legs down. You should have visual visualization skills. You should have near vision. Um, okay, so let's look at the SVP range for carpenters. It's 4.0 to, to 6.0. So carpenters will not qualify. Okay, so that's how to check your, your occupation. Now, let me look at um, another one, headdresses. Guys, let me know when I um when I'm I'm okay. Good, I think it's showing up. Um, headdresses. Let me go back to the headdresses screen. I I wanted to be sure that you guys were following me. So let's check headdresses. What is the SVP range for headdresses? And then we have makeup artists. But let, yeah, let's just look at this. This is also interesting. So provide beauty services such as cutting, coloring, styling hair. You should have you know the um tasks. These are the tasks: schedule client appointments, cut, trim updates records, then your knowledge, and then your skills, and then abilities. This was a very funny one. One of the ones I saw was um, arm hand steadiness. You should have the ability to keep your hand and arm steady while moving your arm or while holding. Of course, you can't have shaky hands and then braid people's hair by the time you're done, or even shaky hands and then try to cut people's hair. They're going to end up with you know issues. You should have finger dexterity. You should have of course, manual dexterity and then oral comprehension, the ability to listen and understand. Somebody says they want a pony and then you go do, um, you go do what, you know, a pineapple hairstyle. I don't know. You should be able to understand and, he, you know, and then be able to implement what people want. So all these skills are, are for, you know, the hairdressers. It's really interesting, guys. Go on there and then look at, some of the things so now let's look at the svp range for hairdressers um did i jump that i think i did uh where is it svp okay so the svp range is 6.0 to 7.0 so you they don't also do not qualify um huh these people so yeah guys you see how how it works just to give you guys an idea drop me your comments type in the profession you want me to check and i'll check it for you guys 
um, drop in your profession if you want to know if your profession has an SVP of 7.0 or higher. That is the qualification. When you go on to, I linked, I, I put this link up yesterday. So you will be able to see it and then check your profession yourself. But if you want me to check it, you may also drop it and then um, hopefully we can check it before we get off. Okay, so let's go back. We have some very interesting things to discuss. So we've spoken about the occupations. Yes, as I said, um, yeah, you should have the, to qualify for the DV on the basis of your work experience, you must have within the past five years, two years of experience in an occupation that's classified as, um, classified as, uh right here in a, classified in an in a specific vocational preparation range of 7.0 or higher okay so guys that is it if um if you're a hairdresser unfortunately you will not qualify so yeah just be careful just look at it and then make sure you know well uh, i mean it can't hurt you can just apply and if you don't qualify you don't qualify so i guess um when you're in okay see it just shows the steps um okay good so now let me talk about some other matters let's let's discuss some other interesting matters let me take off this screen we're going to talk about some practical things and you know um so how do you increase your chances so guys i've put the link of number one the only website you should apply from that's the only only website from the u.s department of state the link is in this feed, you, you should click it and then submit your entry. Don't divert your entry to any other websites. As I told you guys yesterday, people put up all sorts of, they go buy domain names, DB Lottery, US government, DB Lottery, winner, and all sorts of things. And then they'll tell you, pay this amount and they will process it. All scams, so be careful. Um, just use, it's only one website, only one link. I've put it here and then you can, you know, just apply it free for you. Make sure that you're doing the right thing how to increase your chances number one if you are married both spouses may apply because um you know when both spouses apply it's it counts as two different entries so your wife could win or you could win if your wife wins you go along with her if you win and you're the man you can go along with your wife as well so that helps you and then if your children are above um of course 18 and they qualify they, they have the high school education all the work experience, they can also apply and of course list you as their parents. And then when they come here um, within five years, um, they can become citizens and then they can file for you as their parents as well because green card holders cannot file for their petition for their parents. So um, that's the way you can increase your chances of getting a green card or even um, getting selected, making sure that both spouses apply. Apart from that, the other way to increase your chance, of course, is by following instructions and making sure that your entry will not be disqualified. Don't do don't do not don't do a double entry. You'll be disqualified. OK. Um, and don't listen to the people that tell you that, oh, even if you're not married, say you're married, that will increase your chances. That's not true. If you have children, don't mention them. It will, that's not true. Just put in your children. Having children will not disqualify you from, you know, um, getting a visa or a green card through the visa lottery. OK um okay so let's talk about this other thing will applying for a visa lottery affect your chances of um getting a tourist visa later on um so this is a, a, a great area okay well it's presumed that everybody that is applying for visa lottery may have an immigrant intent maybe not so um once you've applied for visa lottery it's on you when you're applying for the tourist visa to display your non-immigrant intent that, okay, for the, well, I did apply for a visa lottery, but I'm now applying for a tourist visa, but I still do not intend to come and live in the U.S. You have to displace that burden because there's a presumption that everybody applying for any type of tourist visa has an immigrant intent, meaning that you want to come and live here in the U.S. And having applied for visa lottery kind of adds to that. So you have a, a lot more, I would say, a lot more um, burden to discharge. So that's that. I won't dwell that too much on that because that's not the focus of this video. It's just one of the questions that I've been I've been getting. Now let's talk about some shocking numbers from Ghana. Oh my gosh, I was shocked. I was like, I was really astounded. Like, let's look at the numbers. You guys are going to be very shocked along with me. Uh, let me pull up this screen and let's talk about it. Hold on. 
Okay, I think it's which one is this? Uh, how do I find this? This, this, not this. Mm, I think it's this one. Must have been. Oop, guys, hold on, please. Bear with me. Okay, good. Yeah, I think it was this. Hold on, guys, please. Um, it's the whoop, whoop, whoop. the first one. Okay. <laughs> it can get so confusing. I think it's this. Yes. Yes. Good, good, good. Okay. Perfect. So, guys, look at this. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, DV lottery statistics. Here are the, some chances of winning, the odds of you getting it. But that's not even my focus. The shocking numbers. Um, this, um, this, the statistics are from between 2008 to 2008, um, 17, so about a period of 10 years. And the average number of applicants, guys, the highest around the world. It like it took yep, we did. Guys, can you imagine? Look at Ghana right here 946,000, well, 946, 747,000 people almost a million people almost a million people no other country has those numbers no other country let me look for i think the the other very big the other country with a lot of ethiopia also had 565,000 565727 um that was for ethiopia half a million people but ghana almost a million people no other country has those astounding numbers i mean it's just really shocking that people want to run away from ghana that badly we have such a beautiful country but yes so those are the shocking numbers look at that nine four nine four six seven four seven and out of the number of applicants only um five thousand and twenty four people um hold on were selected in ghana five thousand almost a million and only five thousand and twenty four people were selected and then 1,571 were issued. And so the odds, 0.17%. Well, according to these statistics, yeah. Um, my main focus was on the number of applicants, almost a million dollars. And to see that no other country is like racing with us is just really, it's really shocking. Mm -mm. I can't find any country that even had 800,000 people, none. The second one I found was Ethiopia, which was 500,000 people, like almost half a million and, um, well, more than half a million, but then no other country. Oh, okay. So Ukraine, second highest, had 790, um, 600 and, well, 796,000 people from Ukraine. That's the second highest. So Ghana, we are the visa lottery champions. Oh my gosh, how shocking are those numbers? Those are really shocking numbers. That's just by the way. Um, which other thing did we want to talk about? Let me see if I've missed anything. I'll be reading comments soon, guys. Drop, drop, drop them, and I will be reading them soon. Um, we talked about the types of job. Oh, yes. And then we're going to talk about something very interesting uh, shortly. I just realized it. Let me read some comments and then we'll be back again. Um, oh, my gosh. I have some really amazing comments today. We have Frederick Vigbedo who says, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Agnes said, Agnes, mommy, Abunake says she's my friend. Yes, she is. She was my roommate back in college. Yes. So yes, um, we have Jael Nanyele, also my roommate. But well, no, I'm sorry, my um, my hostel mate back in college. Uh, she's tagging her sister. Yes, Ruth, how are you? Um, get in touch, Ruth. <laughs> Agnes, mommy, Abnaki is a smart lady. Thank you so much, Agnes. I really appreciate it and your kind words. I will buy him says, I would like to know if there's a portion for work experience and all academic qualifications and also a column to fill if one is a professional example and nurse, lawyer, teacher. ETC that we will have to, um, you know, look at the application, what is contained. I actually started trying to fill out this year's application when it was opened a few hours ago, but I didn't proceed. It was just asking me for the biographic data. So I didn't go on to, you know, I think yesterday, did I? 
I, I must have um, gone over what they ask, but maybe I can do another video covering that and then we'll see if that will be helpful. Prince Tego says, you're simply amazing with how much value you give to your followers. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, this fills me with so much joy and I'm so humbled by your very, very kind words and appreciation of what I do. Anthony Kwekwa Champon says, AK, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. I'm so happy that you guys are enjoying this video and you're having an amazing time with me that's all that matters so yes guys let's talk about this other topic let's talk about what has happened due to covid really interesting stuff so hold on let me take off this screen and then add i think that will be my last screen that i'm sharing with you about uh what's going on and why people are so angry about this year's visa lottery. People are really angry. Like, and I'm going to tell you why people are mad about it uh, right here. Okay. Yep. So let's now talk. Okay. Right here. Hopefully I scroll to the right part. Okay. So the number of visa lotteries, unfortunately, uh, in 2021, Yes, I think yesterday I gave you guys the numbers. Even in fact, what happened was, yes, um, in 2021, you know, normally um, the number of people that apply for visa lottery, sometimes when you add the principal applicants with their derivatives, the derivatives are the spouses of the applicants along with the children under 21 of the applicants. They add up to sometimes 23 million people, sometimes 24 million, 22 million. But last year, it was at 6 million worldwide that was shocking of course that was because of covid right um six million people and out of those people a few were selected and as of july 2021 the u.s department of states had only issued just about 3506 visas out of the 55,000 um that they're supposed to have so that's that that's just a percentage percentage of six percent and I, I remember um, now those calls have stopped, but I, I had a lot of consultations with people like um, visa lottery winners who were very nervous. They had won the visa lottery and they didn't know what to do. They hadn't been called for an interview. And the nature of this game is that by September 30th, so if you win in one year, right? So let's say you win, I think I, I discussed this yesterday, but you win this one. So you, you apply October to November, you apply. By May 1st, 2022, the winners will be announced. By October 2022, they start inviting people, you know, for the visa interview. And guys, by midnight, September 30th, 2023, the final whistle is blown. And if your visa lottery has not been issued, you're out of the game. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of it. So, um, it's just really difficult because they don't care if you won. You should have still been able to, they should have invited you for the interview and then they should have finished processing your green card or your visa. Otherwise, you're out of your you're out of the game. So it's out of your control, but at the same time, it's used against you. And that's the unfair nature. So yes, so just 6% of the visas have been issued for 2021. And even as of June 30, they hadn't even issued... Um, any single visa to the people from Afghanistan this year. And yep, yep, yep. yep. So um, that was it. So this issue is in court. People are battling it out. It's in a case, good luck versus um, Biden. I, 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 Yeah, people are really upset and they feel really um, cheated because they feel like they won the visa lottery, but they still didn't get the chance to come to America. So they are battling it out in court and we're going to see what the, you know, the judges are going to say, if they're going to allow you know, the people from 2020 and 2021 to still adjust their status despite the fact that the deadline is up and people are just angry. Like, look, why are you starting a new visa lottery when you haven't catered to these people? They haven't, you know, been taken care of. So that's what's happened, the visa lottery. But well, regardless of what is happening, uh, you may still want to apply if you believe that you um you you, you stand a chance of of uh you know of course i mean you 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 should always believe you should always believe so guys um it's been fun with you i hope i haven't left out anything i think we've discussed all that i wanted us to talk about 
So please, the link to how to apply is in this video. Make sure you click on it and then you apply. Don't divert your application. Sorry, I dropped my pen. <laughs> to any fraudulent people who take your data or your information and then use it against you or, you know, formulate things against you. All right, guys. So I think we will call it a day. If you, are, if you have comments, questions, drop them before I hop off. It's really been fun discussing Visa Lottery. Don't forget to share with your friends and your family. There's just so much misinformation about the Visa Lottery and I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best to try to assist in the way that I can. Don't go pay money to anybody who's going to guarantee you a visa. Nobody can do that. Nobody, nobody. So yeah, be careful of that. And um, that's it. Okay, guys. So I will see you tomorrow. Please have a wonderful night. Be safe. Take care. And bye-bye. Okay, so I guess we have... Oh, we have our final comment. Let me read it. Rosie Bell. Lisa says, thank you. You're very welcome. Rosie Bell. You are very welcome. All right, guys. So <laughs> I'll sign off and then I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.